Well, hello my loves, how are you all today? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Silvina and in today's video we're going to talk about some fashion staples or classic pieces that will forever stand the test of time because they have already been doing so for many many years and also we will be talking about a little of fashion history too. I feel that every single one of us has at least one of these pieces because they are classics, they look good with everything and they are very good investment pieces since you can wear them multiple times uh, for as long as the piece holds basically. These pieces are classics but there are many different variations of them for many different styles and every single year new versions of them come to life. These pieces come in different textures or shapes or cuts or fits so there are options for everyone that's why they are classics just a little FYI I'm not gonna talk about shoes on this video because I'm planning to do a separate video on shoe essentials so stay tuned and also I just want to let you know that next video is going to be how to style classic pieces in different ways some more formal and some more casual and we're going to be using some of the pieces that we're going to talk about on this video so stay tuned for that also and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it so without further ado, let's start checking out these pieces one by one. Let's go. Okay, first up, a white shirt. This is one of the most classic pieces in my opinion that can easily be dressed up or down without any inconvenience. Going back in time, initially in the early 1800s, the white shirt as we know it today were worn by men, rich gentlemen more specifically. And it was a symbol of high class and status because White is a color that can be stained pretty easily, so only rich people that didn't do any manual labor could afford it and have multiple of them be washed regularly to maintain the white color. From this point on, the distinction between white color and blue color began being the white color, the aristocracy and the rich gentry and the blue colors, the laborers. Also, the higher the color, the higher the rank because higher colors represented less possibility to move and therefore implied that you didn't do any manual labor. But moving on with the mass production of cotton in the late 1800s, the value of the white shirt diminished a little, making it more accessible for other social classes. Up until this point, like I said, white shirts were mainly worn by men. But in the early 20th century, with the intent of dissolving gender and class norms and with the rising of feminine movements, women started wearing shirts too. The introduction of synthetic fabrics made the piece even more accessible for people. But one important thing that we have to notice is that even though the white shirt is fairly democratized, it still holds a certain level of prestige, professionalism and elegance. So the second classic piece of this video is a black tailor pant. Of course, pants as themselves are probably one of the first pieces to ever be invented and mainly and initially worn by men. But in this case, I'm talking about tailored pants. So for women, tailored pants didn't become popular up until the early 20th century when trouser suits became prevalent. Before that, women wore mainly skirt suits. And this was mainly due to movie stars like Katherine Hepburn and Marlene Dietrich wearing them. Of course, initially this was quite controversial because it made them look masculine or trying to take the men's place. But with the Second World War and women having to do the men's work, using pants was actually required and it led later on to be a little more accepted but not entirely. In 1966, Yves Saint Laurent introduced Le Smoking, which was an adaptation of the classic men tuxedo into women's evening wear, which was quite controversial at the time and it will continue to be so for a few more years. Nowadays, a pants suit is seen as traditional, conservative and elegant. In my opinion, just as a white shirt, a black tailor pant is a basic and very appropriate piece inside a corporate and professional environment. But they are both pieces that could easily be worn outside the workplace for many different occasions, so a black tailor pant is a versatile piece that in my opinion everyone should have in their wardrobe. Okay, so next up is one of the most common pairings for a black trouser, which is a black blazer. Suits have been around for a really long time, 
initially worn by men as sporting jackets or even by the navy too. As I said a few moments ago, pantsuits were not that acceptable for women up until the 1970s, so before that they wore skirt suits. So that being said, blazers were acceptable for women a little earlier than pants. There are records of women wearing blazers in the late 19th century and early 20th century as a staple of the new women's wardrobe. And they were worn with a shirt waist and a tailored skirt. Nowadays, a blazer is a versatile piece that can make any outfit, no matter how casual it is, look a lot more smarter and polished. And it has been around for literally more than a century, so that's why it's considered a classic. By the way, I recently did a video on how to style a black blazer, so go check it out after this video if you want. I will leave it up here or in the description box. Up next is one of the most popular pieces in history in my opinion, and that is the classic blue jeans. We all know that the most iconic brand when it comes to jeans is Levi's and I'm not taking any credit from them but did you know that they didn't actually invent jeans? The jean fabric started in the 1800s in the French town of Nimes and it was originally used to make different pieces like trousers, overalls and coats. But one thing that we do have to acknowledge is that the jeans as we know them today, you know, pants with the pockets and rivets and all that stuff were actually painted in 1873 by Jacob Davis, which was a tailor, and Levi Strauss, which was the owner of a wholesale fabric house in San Francisco. Initially, the purpose of the jeans was to be worn by mine workers because they were sturdy, they lasted long, and they were actually comfortable. In 1890, they created their most iconic model, which is the 501, and it's the one that I have. And let me tell you that I love this pair of jeans because they are very classic, cut, and flattering jeans. As with everything, Hollywood helped popularize the jeans, making it a very sought-for piece when you're trying to look stylish but at the same time casual. We have to remember that in the 20th century, TV and movies and media were the main source of information and entertainment for people, so the power of influence that the content that they consumed through media had in them was actually pretty logical and even expected. If people saw a movie star wearing something, it became popular really quickly. Nowadays, we have the same thing happening with social media and influencers and celebrities. So the jeans have been a common piece throughout many different eras, cultures, and social movements. Going from the cowboys to the 1950s rock and roll, to the hippies, to the punks, and so on. Nowadays, the jeans are probably one of the most reproduced, but also diversified pieces because there are jeans of every single color and cut imaginable. Up next, one of the most common pairings for a pair of jeans is, of course, the white t-shirt. The white t-shirt crosses different cultures and genders and classes and styles as a classic and unisex wardrobe item. It ranges from a fast fashion staple to a high-priced commodity. Initially, in the late 1800s, when William Kahn invented the knitting machine, the white t-shirt was worn as underwear for workers on their free time and soldiers. Prior to this, some variations of the cotton t-shirt that we know today were also worn as underwear, but made out of other fabrics like silk or linen. But the mass production of cotton made the t-shirts more accessible to everyone. But like I said, up until this point, the t-shirts were exclusively worn as underwear for men, so being seen with this piece in public could be actually quite scandalous. But it was around the 1950s when the perception of this piece started to change a little. During the post-war period, there was a whole rebellion movement going on, so actors like Marlon Brando and James Dean started to appear on screen with a white t-shirt. This was seen as a rebellion of the younger generations against the establishment, but also a representation of hyper-masculinity because let's remember that up until this point, t-shirts were only worn by men. Later on in the 1960s and 70s, the piece became more popular among women too and therefore more unisex. Then, just like the jeans, the piece kept evolving and being incorporated by many different generations, thus becoming a very iconic piece in the pop culture. And it also evolved into a symbol of representation of people's ideas and thoughts and likes, and now we know that as the graphic tee.
Okay, so classic piece number six is a little black dress. A piece that practically every single woman owns because it's appropriate for every single situation. It can be dressed up or down and it also comes in so many different variations tailored according to your likings and your style. So going back in time, although black dresses have been around for a really, really long time, the invention of the little black dress has been attributed to Coco Chanel in 1926 although we know that it wasn't exactly like that. In that same year, Vogue declared Coco Chanel's black, long sleeve silk crepe dress the little black dress of the record, claiming that it was the frock that all the world will wear. And they were right. I mean, not that exact piece, but variations of it. So black dresses in the 15th and 16th centuries and on were actually quite expensive to make because black dye was not common. So they had to import the dye and that cost of money. So uh, it was a symbol of refinement and wealth and status. Then in the 19th century with the invention of synthetic dyes, black dresses were popularized across classes, being worn by the highest spheres and also by the lower classes. During that time, it was actually called the color of maids because since it's a dark color, it can hide the stains very well so they make sure that they always look respectable and presentable but that didn't mean that the higher classes wouldn't wear it they totally wore it too because in any case black represented elegance and mystery with the popularization of the little black dress in 1926 and the later development of synthetic fabrics the little black dress continued to be a staple for wealthy women but also for mid and low class women making it accessible for everyone. As we talked about in my Audrey Hepburn style analysis video, the Shibangshi dress that she wore for breakfast at Tiffany's became one of the most iconic little black dresses in history and it epitomized the usage of little black dress and pearls as a symbol of high class. Nowadays, the little black dress is not exclusively made out of silk crepe and it doesn't even have to be little, but it has to necessarily be black. So classic item number seven is a trench coat. I absolutely love trench coats. I think it makes any outfit super elegant and super chic. So a little history on the trench coat, they were initially made as military clothes worn by the British Army in the trench warfare, hence its name of World War I. In the early 19th century, Charles McIntosh invented rubberized cotton fabric used to make the uniforms of the aristocratic gentlemen that were serving as officers in the British Army and also for their sportswear and rainwear because it was a very waterproof and resistant fabric. Then Thomas Burberry invented what we now call gabardine, which is still a waterproof fabric but much more breathable. After World War I, the trench coat was mainly used as rainwear and then it evolved to what we know today thanks to the popularization of it through movies and media overall. Burberry made the trench coat so popular and an easily relatable piece with the brand alongside the plaid print, making it one of the most iconic pieces of clothing up to this day. More than a hundred years later of its invention, now the trench coat comes in many different lengths and colors and with different accents and accessories, so you can imagine why it's on this list. So classic piece number eight is a black wool coat. That being said, it doesn't necessarily have to be black, it's just that black is the most classic of classics, but a wool coat overall. So like we said in the previous point, jackets and coats as many different pieces that we have discussed in this video have originated from menswear. The wool coat or pea coat, similarly to the trench coat, was initially worn for military purposes and it has been around since the 1800s. Initially, the coats were double-breasted to protect the soldiers from harsh conditions and they had pockets to help them keep their personal belongings. Then, as with everything, later on, coats started to be introduced to other spheres of social life and started to be worn by other classes and genders. 
in the late 19th century and early 20th century, women started to incorporate more masculine pieces into their outfits as a form of rebellion against gender discrimination. And also new activities for women arose and fashion style continued to change and evolve, so women started wearing wool coats more and more. Before that, they were more keen to wearing capes. Nowadays, coats are not exclusively made out of wool. With the rise of synthetic fabrics, now we see coats made out of acrylic or polyester or even blends with wool. We can also find coats in every single color with different details, shapes and lengths. A black coat, in my opinion, is a staple piece in any classic wardrobe because it keeps you warm, it can serve multiple purposes, and it also looks good with everything. My personal favorite type is either a fitted double-breasted or a relaxed fit with a tie around the waist, but it necessarily has to be long. Number 9 is so popular that I think that literally every single person has at least one of them although I know many people that have many of them and that is a knit sweater. So going back in history, the knitting of wool is an activity that has been developed for at least 2,000 years if not more and around the 15th century the first wool tunics and knitted shirts started to be made out of wool by the wives of fishermen and sailors to protect them from like harsh weather and cold even when damped. But the sweater itself as we know it today kind of started in the 1890s and it was worn by the US athletes before and after competitions to protect themselves from cold. Initially those sweaters were dark blue and very heavy. But it wasn't up until the 1920s when the popularity of the knitwear started to get quite big and it was seen more as a fashion item instead of a practical item for sailors and athletes. At this point, knit sweaters were also a big item used in sports and they were an item that represented more like elegance and elevated casualness. Nowadays, the knit sweater not only comes in wool but in many many different variations and it would be quite impossible to name them all. I feel that this is a piece that we all have and wear not only for its practical capacities of keeping us warm but they actually look really stylish and cute. So yeah, a knit sweater, especially if it's of a solid color and a classic cut it will always be a staple that will never go out of style for me and the great thing is that there's one for every single one of us okay so lastly I wanted to include a bag and if I were to select a bag that is like super iconic I would say a black bag with a classic shape is the way to go so we know that the origins of the bag itself has its roots in being pieces that general practitioners wore to visit their patients at their homes a very 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 long time ago. It was also a piece mainly restricted to hold your necessary things in. In fact, in the 19th century and before, women wore what was called the chatelaines, which were like small fanning packs in which they carried their most essential items and they were kind of like an appendix of their outfits. And they also wore what's called reticules, which are like small purses made out of fabric. They didn't want their appearance to be bulky, so they wore these pieces that were very small and delicate, often embroidered by themselves. The handbag or bag as we know it today didn't come along up until the mid 1800s during the industrial revolution and it was created as a practical solution for traveling more often by train so women needed bigger handbags to carry all of their things. H.J. caved London to the request of a businessman that wanted to create a set of handbags for his wife to travel with created the first line of leather luxury bags. Funnily, people didn't react very well to those handbags because they thought that they were too big or too heavy for women to wear, so they discontinued making them. It wasn't up until the 20th century that the handbag became more popular thanks to media, and it was a symbol of wealth, class, and femininity. Over the years, many luxury brands have created very exclusive but iconic handbags such as the Birkin bag, the Kelly bag, the Chanel 255, the Lady Dior, the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, and so on. The handbag is an essential in every woman's closet and they come in every shape, size, and color. In my personal case, I always prefer classic shapes in neutral color so that I can combine them with multiple pieces in my wardrobe. But if I have to choose a favorite, I will always choose a black one with a top handle and a crossbody strap to give me versatility. 
so i hope you enjoyed today's video please comment down below which of these pieces is the most classic and a staple to you i think there are even more classic pieces so let me know down in the comment section if you want me to do a part two and also let me know if you would like me to do a more thorough fashion history dissection of some of the pieces that we talked today this was just a brief story of each piece but let me know if you would like me to do a more extensive one i would happily do so because i love fashion history Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on for more fashion and lifestyle content. And I will leave the links in the description box of all of my social media so you can go check them out. I will see you all in my next video. I hope you have an amazing day as always. Ciao, ciao!